Welcome back to Read Only Memories. So we've just finished talking to Melody Flores, and she gave us another lead, which is somebody named Vincent that we're supposed to meet, and apparently they can tell us more about the kind of research that Hayden was doing. So we can go follow up on that lead over here, or we can go to K Cobb and follow up on Tomcat's lead. Although Tomcat's lead is really not much of a lead, to be honest, at the moment, but it's probably going to turn into something interesting. So yeah, going to the Golden Gate Park to meet Vincent is it feels like the most likely thing to actually give me useful information about what we're trying to find. But I think I'm going to go to K-Cobb instead because I don't want to neglect Tomcat's... Uh, was, was it Tomcat's friend that wanted help? I don't know if it's actually somebody's friend that we're going to see or just somebody who just happened to ask Tomcat for help. Uh, but regardless, I kind of want to do this because Tomcat did, after all, help us uh, quite a bit with researching what happened to Hayden. So I don't want to neglect them. So let's go to K-Cob. Can I pour the milk on this one? Those wipers look scary pointed out like that. <laughs> I guess all modern cars have defensive wipers. An ad for the latest... Uh, ZS? Z5? I really can't tell if that's a 5 or an S. I think it's an S. ZS Coupe starts playing as you approach the car. Whoa, this is a plant that's actually not covered in a bubble. Bulbatus riparia, one of the more popular display ferns in recent times. Expensive, given the cost of caring for it. The species is native to threatened tropical forests, but it became a popular import after being endorsed by a former child star turned cons conservationist. <laughs> former child star turned conservationist? That's an interesting change in your public image. This office building is owned by the coalition called COSIO Corporation. The sign lists out all the different businesses and groups that operate here. The sign already speaks everything it prints. Hmm. No one is available at this moment. We apologize for the inconvenience. Oh. Uh. Go up. Wait a minute, what's up here? Oh my god, those trees are huge! These trees are genuine. Real roof trees. These became all the rage back in the 40s. They're massive! They also frankly look rather dangerous. That is a lot of weight, and it looks like it's kind of spilling off of the roof. I'd be worried about those falling off or breaking the building structure or something. Many companies sponsor roof trees. They used to sponsor animals, but after the York's Raccoon blackout of 2060, they stopped that practice. Raccoon blackout of 2060? Hmm? Okay, so did I just miss the opportunity to talk to this person because I did the other thing instead? Or maybe I can just come back here later? You prefer to only converse with revolving doors. Eh, fair enough. Hm. Well, I guess we're not meeting anybody here right now. Let's go to Golden Gate Park and meet, Vin meet Vincent. Hey, guy. No, literally, that's your name. What's up, guy? You've never seen this person, and they appear to be waiting for somebody. Perhaps this is who you're supposed to meet? Can I help you with something? I don't really have time to talk. I'm waiting for someone. Um, are you Vincent Mensa? We're here for a meeting on behalf of Melody Flores. Oh, good. You're Melody's people. Do you have the things that I asked for? 
Uh, there must be some miscommunication. Melody said that you would be able to provide us with some information about Hayden Weber's projects within Parallax. He has gone missing, and any information we could uh, we could get may be useful. Damn that old woman. We had a deal. She promised me those things, and I'm not giving her anything until I get them. I already know Hayden is missing. Why else would I be willing to sell corporate secrets to Flower? This was my chance to get away from Parallax. Instead she sends the two of you, hat in hand, with none of the things I need. I'm assuming you're Hayden's little pet AI? Insulting, but accurate. Look, it's not that I don't want to help. I do. Hayden was a colleague, and a friend. But if I just hand over his research, I lose most of my leverage. I need help getting the hell out of here. I'll just have to shop it around again, since Flower isn't interested in information on Parallax's new big project. Maybe after I get a buyer, I'll be able to pass it to you. Perhaps we could assist you? My friend here is a terrific journalist. Being skilled at hunting down people and information is her job. Uh, I don't know. Look, I need a hundred thousand credits cash, fake passports for me and my wife, and an untraceable car. If you can give me that, I can get the hell out of here and get to Canada. And I'll give you anything you want. Hayden's research notes, what I know about Parallax, my company's security credentials. Whatever, I just can't stay in Neo SF anymore. We might be able to do that. Can we? I mean, I certainly don't have the resources to do that, but maybe Dr. Fairlight? Dr. Fairlight is rich. And he apparently wants to help. He would have the resources to do this, certainly. Might? Uh, do you mind answering some other questions first? What? Why? Melody only gave us a rough sketch of what you need. The more you can tell us about the situation, the sooner we can fulfill your request. Okay, sure. As long as it isn't any of the juicy stuff. What do you do for Parallax? I'm the head applications engineer for their data analysis division. Or maybe was, is what I should be saying. If Hayden is the big brain who comes up with the math that runs the search algorithms, I'm the guy who figures out how to collect and apply the data we get. We've worked pretty closely for years, but he's head and shoulders above me as far as theory goes. I just build stuff out of the things he hands me. I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit here, Vincent. Hayden was just a computer scientist, if a good one. Was? Ah, uh, a slip of the tongue. I'm still getting used to my independence from him. <laughs> and that right there proves my point. Hayden built a fully independent machine intelligence in his spare time. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to bash myself here. I'm a good software engineer. Probably one of the best. But machine intelligence? In a form factor like yours? Now that blows my mind. We've got full immersion virtual reality and brains in boxes running around inside android shells. Yet most people would still call you science fiction. Hmm. If you say so. I do. Why are you so adamant about getting out of new SF? Because Parallax is rotting from the inside out. Hayden going missing is the last straw. There's... Hmm. What's the best way of saying this without giving away their game? 
This new project that's about to roll out is likely to change everything about how Parallax does their business. Not in an end-user kind of way, but everything behind the scenes will certainly change. We've had some board shakeups since the launch of the MeshNet, and the people at the top are different from the ones who've previously run the company. They're harder, more ruthless, and more concerned with profits than ever before. The altruism the company has displayed in the past is gone, and this new project has promised to give the board owners more power. Not just richest company in the valley power, either. Real power. They got rid of Hayden, because he was about to publish something that would... get in the way of that. And not to be too dramatic, but I think they got rid of him for good, too. Rumors and speculation, but... Anyway, if they're willing to get rid of the brightest mind on their payroll, what's to stop them from getting rid of me? There's half a dozen people who could do my job. So I'm getting out before I accidentally step on the wrong person's toes and end up at the bottom of the bay or whatever. I would probably do the same thing. I would not want to work in that company. Work in a company that's doing things you don't morally agree with, and a company that you think might literally have killed your friend and may kill you. That's horrible. It's a horrible position to be in. Do you know anything about Hayden's disappearance? Nothing concrete. I probably wouldn't have noticed anything out of the ordinary. I mean, Hayden goes out for a couple of days all the time, right? Conferences and guest teaching. He doesn't exactly share his itinerary with me. But they cleared out his office, revoked his security clearances, and confiscated anything he had been working on with other divisions. I asked around, and no one will say anything. If he had jumped ship, went to a different company, it would be the talk of the week of the water coolers. At the water coolers, rather. Instead, dead silence. Oh god, dead silence, that's all too true. Thankfully, he allowed me to keep backups of most of his work, simply because I cross-referenced it so much. He didn't like having it all in one place anyway. Other than that, I don't know anything specific. Thank you. We'll go get those things for you. <clears throat> sure. I guess I can stick around here for a while. I need to make some calls anyway. If you do manage to get what I need, I'll give you anything you want. Forwarding photos and info for the passports to Turing now. And... I really hope you can do this. I'd rather give it to you than some other corporation anyway. See you soon. I'm not quite sure where to get fake passports or an untraceable car. The only shady folks we know are those kids who vandalized Hayden's apartment. I doubt they could point us in the right direction, but a long shot is better than no shot. They might agree to help us in repayment for the damage done to the apartment. They seemed remorseful. <laughs> they seemed remorseful. Uh, maybe the one guy was remorseful, but I'm not so sure about... Starfucker. We should check Market Street for them, in case they regularly hang out there. As for the rest, perhaps Dr. Fairlight or Melody could spot us the cash. A hundred thousand is no small amount, but it's unlikely to cause much consternation for either of them, assuming they're as dedicated to helping as they claim. Melody is assumably home as usual, and Fairlight did let us know that he'd be at the hospital. But we could ask either of them for assistance. Hmm. I get the feeling this game might have a bit of a branching narrative. Because the fact that I went to K-Cob, 
Or rather, I went to Melody's first, and then I went to K-Cob, and there's nobody there to even talk to. So I feel like by going to Melody, it precluded me from going to K-Cob. And it looks like I can either ask Fairlight or Melody for the money now, so I'm kind of like choosing who I want to... to... I don't know, get into bed with, so to speak? As far as that goes? Or who to... who to owe a favor to, I guess? So I wonder if this game actually maybe has multiple endings or something like that. Alright, well, Melody or Fairlight? Well, I know Fairlight more. I do know Fairlight better, so I'm gonna go to Fairlight for the money. Oh, let's pet the cleaning ROM again. It's Neo SF's littlest hero. I think it wants you to move, so it can clean. It's a little unnerving, but you have to admire its great fighting spirit. Uh, I just tried to use the headphones on it, so I think it's talking about whatever sound came out of the headphones. Okay, um... Uh... Do I have to ask the receptionist? I guess I do. Greetings, guest in Elevenda. Our records indicate that you were here recently for an event, event involving cranial trauma, but discharged yourself early against recommendation. Have you returned for a checkup? I can schedule one for you and assist you with the paperwork if you need it. Uh, thanks, but no, I need to talk to Yannick Fairlight. Patient Fairlight is currently available to receive visitors. Take the stairs to the second floor and meet him in room 214. I'll page ahead and let him know you're on the way. Please note that patient Fairlight is to avoid undue stress, so take care to not upset him. You'll be ejected from the building if you begin to set back his treatment progress. Stress-free, that's our motto. Right, Nelavanda? Ah, Nelavanda. I did not expect to see you so soon. Have you had a break in the case? I've been receiving odd phone calls from strangers all day long. So I'm curious to know if your efforts have proven more productive. I hope my suggestion to speak to Melody Flores panned out. It did, Dr. Fairlight. She pointed us towards a Parallax researcher willing to sell us information. Ah, wonderful. So I assume... We were hoping you'd be willing to front us the money we need. The information should be good. Ah. I see. How much? 100,000 credits. In cash. Ah. A pittance. Oh, okay. Yes, a pittance. I will message Leon and have him get the cash. As long as you are willing to pass on anything that might be of interest to me. I am willing to help, but I'm still a businessman. Information from inside Parallax could be quite valuable to me, as well as you. That sounds fair, Dr. Fairlight. Right, Nelavanda? <laughs> I just realized how funny that, sen that sentence sounded. That sounds fair, Dr. Fairlight. Huh? Okay, okay, now that I say it again, it doesn't sound that funny. Sure. Ah, it is a deal then. Excellent. Now, it will take a little while for little while for Leon to run this errand for us. Perhaps the two of you wouldn't mind keeping an old man company. My treatments are not without discomfort, and I would not mind a distraction while they go to work. I think we can spare a few extra minutes. Hmm. I would ask about the investigation. But I would rather wait until the entire story is revealed before we run through it. I find it greatly irritating to leap into a story in the middle. Perhaps there's a tale you'd like you'd like me to tell. Hmm. I'm curious if I'm curious what his his side of the story. 
or his version of his and Melody's relationship is going to be. Let's see. How did you and Melody come at odds? <laughs> ah, that is a bit embarrassing. Okay, so I think what Melody said was true, and he is going to admit it. The folly of a younger man, I assure you. Our companies worked together to develop the first generation of virtual reality neural implants. But I made the mistake of letting business and pleasure mix. Miss Flores is quite beautiful, you see. And I was smitten. I've scarcely met a woman I would consider my equal, and Melody Flores is at the top of that list. Riding high on the success of our joint venture, I proposed a more informal relationship between the two of us, but was rebuffed. I'm ashamed to admit that she wounded my pride, and I did not comport myself with much dignity after that. I directed our company to sabotage the neural implant program, but she was more than skilled enough to recover from such base treachery. We've been at odds ever since. But... I have never married, and neither has she. Sometimes enemies can be closer than our allies, in a certain light. You know where you stand with them, you see. Perhaps it's time to bury the hatchet. I'm tired of fighting, and not just this battle. I would not object to spending the rest of my time with a respected adversary. I shall send her a correspondence. I wish you luck, Dr. Fairlight. Melody is still quite sharp, in every sense of the word. Ah, thank you. I would expect nothing less from a woman of her caliber. She is remarkable. Okay, well, at least he admitted it. It's a shitty thing for him to do, but at least he admits it. <laughs> I wonder what his correspondence to her would be. What do you say to somebody in that kind of a situation? Like, hi, I know it was a piece of shit to you, like, 20, 30, whatever years ago. Um, do you want to make up and be friends? Bye. Like, really, what would you say? Uh. How were you ousted from the Parallax Board of Directors? Hmm. A dastardly tale. After the merger, I was given the position of Chief Technology Officer and was tasked with integrating System 1's Lips OS and Parallax's various web search products. Things were going well, especially with Hayden's newest work, pushing the boundaries of what could be done with the technology. Until the board started pushing the new MeshNet project. It was an ambitious project, and it's proven to be a game changer in the long run. But at the time, the board was blind to the possible weaknesses in the system. And I fought long and hard for more time and resources to make sure the new network was secure. A breach of the system could leak thousands of users' data and would deal a nasty blow to the company at a time when it was still getting its feet settled. They overrode my objections and launched the damn project early, trying to plump up a lean quarter. <laughs> you should know the rest. Some child tore a hole in the network a mile wide, and the entire company had egg on its face for months until they could patch the security weaknesses. That would be Tom Gat. And despite the fact that I had made calls for more time from day one, they used the event as a convenient excuse to vote me off the board. <laughs> really? Wow, they fucked up and they didn't do what Fairlight wanted them to do and that's what messed them up and they somehow managed to use that as leverage? That should be evidence to convince them that he should be in a, I don't know, a position of more power, where they should listen to him more, not that they should oust him. Idiots. I was a troublesome relic from System 1, and they were tired of fighting me, regardless of whether I was right or not. That must have been frustrating, knowing you were right and being muscled out anyway. Ah, yes. That barely describes the half of it, Turing. But it was also a long time ago. 
I have other pursuits and interests now. Hmm. Perhaps there's something Turing would like to hear? Oh, yes. Perhaps you could tell a story about Hayden. As we've been pulling on the loose ends of his life, I've been shown that I know so little about him. His time with me was such a small taste. Ah, very true. But is not every person shown only a small slice of the life of their father? I too only know a little about Hayden, but it was a different time. I met him shortly after the merger. I was put in charge of his research division by the board of directors, and first met him when he stormed into my office and slammed his research directly on my desk. To hear him tell it, his direct superior was stifling his attempts to develop a new correlative search algorithm, calling it a waste of time. I may have disciplined him for insubordination, as the management structure is there for a reason, but I admired his spirit and read over his proposal. It was solid, so I greenlit it. I recall he spent one furious weekend pushing our supercomputer to the limits with his calculations and dropped the results in front of me the following Monday, almost too exhausted to stand. I ended up taking it to the new board, but it was Hayden's fire that convinced them to implement it. He knew how to command a room, in his own way, a talent few men of the mind have. What was the proposal? As I said, it was a new search algorithm, one that correlated the user's inputs on Ellipse OS with search terms to give more relevant predictive results to a specific user. It would measure all types of data that we regularly collect, and then use those elements to quickly and accurately determine the user's age, gender, interests, even their immediate desires. Very dicey stuff to keep as useful data, but Hayden's algorithms were solid. After a little work, search results became almost 25% more desirable to the user upon implementation. I'm not sure anyone else could have pulled it off, but it earned him his own research team. He was a whirlwind during those days. He always seemed so calm and patient. It's hard to imagine him storming into anyone's office like that. Ah, well, he was a younger man then. As he got older, he learned how to better work around a problem, rather than just charging through it. Patience is a virtue learned through experience. Hmm. Thank you, Dr. Fairlight. Alright, we're running out of time, Dr. Fairlight. Ah, of course. Don't let my ramblings keep you. Time waits for no one, including robots, as the case may be. Leon should be downstairs waiting for you with the credits you need. Good luck, and Godspeed, my friends. Thank you again, Dr. Fairlight. Hey, there you are. I was afraid Fairlight would talk your ears off until your bones turned to dust like his. Or, well, I guess you don't have bones, Turing. Maybe until your... circuits oxidized? Man, modern technology really screws up good old colloquialisms. I feel your pain, Mr. Decker. I'm constantly amazed at the sheer number of sayings and permutations of sayings one must memorize as a matter of course while using English. Keeping up is a veritable nightmare. No kidding. At least you have the entire mesh hooked right into your brain, eh? The rest of us just have to do with the meat. Anyway, Yannick had me get you to some cash. Not sure what you did to pry it out of the old man, but I wish I was getting Christmas bonuses like this. We needed to buy some information. Dr. Fairlight is merely assisting us further with our investigation. Information can be real expensive. Still, if you decide to blow it all on something fun, don't forget your old friend Leon, alright? I know some spots to drop a little unmarked cash, if you catch my meaning. Um, certainly, Mr. Decker. 
That's the spirit. You've got my number. I can only imagine what carnal pursuits Mr. Decker was referring to, and I have no idea why he thinks I would be at all interested. Regardless, I can ponder the mysteries of the human glandular system while on the move. We still have things to do before we can meet back up with Mr. Mensa. Okay, so yeah, we need to go to Market Street and find an unmarked car, right? Yeah, see if they can help us get an unmarked car and maybe passports. Let's go. Let it snow. So, wait a minute, this thing's still broken? Hold on, before I do anything else, can I fix you? You poor, poor thing. That thing's gotta be just busting its circuits trying to make it snow constantly. Don't bug it. It already seems to be in a stormy mood. Ha ha ha. Come on, can't I fix it? Pour milk on it. Hurricanes usually cause spoiled milk, not the other way around. Wait, how would a hurricane spoil milk? I don't get it. Because it knocks out the power and then the milk goes bad? Or because it smashes the fridge and then the milk isn't refrigerated? Or what? Let's go talk to... Ramona, that's her- yeah, she's not too happy. I can't imagine why, it's not like I messed up her weather ROM that I promised him. <clears throat> I told you jerks not to break my ROM. Now I can't get it to stop snowing. Those protesters are gone, but I'm still not gonna have any customers with it freezing like this. Uh. Uh. Um, meh. I was just thinking, if they serve, like, you know, hot chocolate hassies or whatever. <laughs> I, I mean, hassies an energy drink, right? So I don't know why you'd... Uh, God, a warm energy drink sounds disgusting, but whatever the hell hassie is. If they serve warm stuff, I mean, yeah, that'd go well with snow, wouldn't it? This hassie hot cup... No, wait, this, this is basically like a corporate slogan. This hassie hot cup is the perfect thing to warm me up. Ding! No, out of nowhere. I guess I'll wait it out in here. Wow, look at it out there. So magical. Uh, don't think I've forgiven you, you dingus. I better go get some hassy hot cups going. Well, all's well that ends well. Right, Nilabanda? I'll check the mesh for common issues with the mode selector on the 6703 ROM unit, and for the solutions to the Hassie bar owner. I'm certain she'll be able to get it turned off after the customer rush. Poor Ramona. Ramona's adorable looking. She's so adorable looking in that outfit, I wish I could see it more. I want to see the entire outfit. Hmm. Should I talk to all these people? <laughs> Wrestler. Film assistant? What are you filming? Oh yeah, you've got like a flag. What's going on here? A TMI Entertainment film assistant taking a break to enjoy a Hassie hot cup. Hassie! If I was actually in charge of content, I would make sure we did a big story on these new Hassie hot cups. Delish. Oh my god. Hey there. I go by Night Witch. <laughs> That's a cool name. A skinny hybrid with green skin and pointy ears. I usually hang out at the Stardust, but they don't serve food, so I come here for hassy hot cups during the day. Wait, are you saying you eat? Like, that is, that is how you get your food for the day, is by drinking? That's kind of weird. Howdy. 
You can call me Cactus Canary? Canary? Cactus Canary. Your head does look like a cactus. Not sure about the canary part, though. Isn't that a bird? I think that's a kind of bird. Canary in the mines kind of thing? Something like that. Those hassy hawkups are disgusting. I'm just here to see the wrestlers. Can't wait for the New Year's show. So what person actually doesn't like Hassy? Oh my god. It seems like everybody likes Hassy so much that I'm surprised anybody's even allowed to not like Hassy. I feel like that might be a like a a, a death penalty earning offense to the government to not like Hassy. Brian Mulberry. You're the only one out here. What are you doing here? Brian Mulberry, leader of the local chapter of the Human Revolution. One simple failure will not dissuade our cause. You realize you're the only one out here, right? Want some spoiled milk? You feel free to hold on to that for now. Nope, still doesn't want it. Youths? Starfucker! How's it go? Oh, he's giving me the thumbs down. Damn. And his glasses are still messed up. Poor guy. Maybe they're broken. Alright, well, I'm gonna talk to Starfucker and Oliver. <laughs> that should be like a band name or something. Starfucker and Oliver. That name is amazing. Starfucker. Who the fuck names themselves Starfucker? You... I don't know if that's more just dumb or funny or what. It's just so bizarre. It just makes me want to burst out laughing. It's like somebody trying to make a name that sounds nasty and badass, you know? Except it just sounds hilarious. What does it even mean? You fuck stars? How do you fuck a star? You can't fuck a star. Or maybe he's just slept with a lot of celebrities. Hmm. Anyway, alright, well, I think I'll end this episode here, and when I return, I'm gonna talk to Starfucker and Oliver and see if we can get ourselves some passports and an unmarked car. <laughs>